What's the most difficult word for you to say in English? Momentarily? It's like oh, momentarily. Oh, yeah, momentarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably very momentarily, you know? Just <laughs> <laughs> We can't say the word like a ton of times because then we start yeah. finding a problem with it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. Mackenzie Dern is not foreign. She was born and raised in Arizona. She's probably one of the most American fighters on the roster. This is one of the most random and hilarious things in the UFC to me because just out of nowhere, this girl decides to cosplay as like a full-fledged Brazilian. I mean, she is half Brazilian. Her father is the legendary jiu-jitsu competitor, Wellington Megaton Diaz. But she was born in and lived in Glendale, Arizona until she was 20 years old. She graduated from Ironwood High School in Glendale, Arizona. Here Here's what she used to sound like when she was in her late teens, early 20s. Blue belt underneath my dad, Megaton Diaz and um, my background is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So going from that to now a fighter that apparently needs a translator in less than a decade is just... Damn. Yeah, because I was c super confused when I interviewed her um, when she won in the UFC, uh, they wanted a translator. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, she speaks perfect English. <sighs> Like, this is really bizarre. So George Grigel came in with me, and uh, he's like, just in case she gets messed up any words. And, like, I didn't even question it. I was like, okay. I was confused. I'm like, but wait a minute. I know she speaks perfect English. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, raised in Arizona, right? Yeah, but she f***ing speaks perfect English. So I don't know if they were selling it. You know, I don't know whose idea it was. I don't know. I don't know. I don't get it. Your thoughts on this fight? Michael Beast being, I love you. <laughs> I love you, Michael. <laughs> you do that to me. I love you. The situation kind of reminds me of Hilaria Baldwin, who is 100% American and only vacationed in Spain when she was a kid and yet walks around talking in like a Sofia Vergara type of accent. Because they ask me, Mommy, what, like, what are these people doing? And it's a very hard thing as a mom to try to explain. So please, go home, because I'm not going to say anything, and Alec is not going to say anything. It almost seems to stem from this weird insecurity that some Americans have, where they don't just want to be American, they want to add a little bit of spice to their background. I remember Brian Ortega going through something similar a couple of years back, where coming up, he was this clean-cut, surfer kind of looking dude. This is my roots, you know, it's the roots of where I'm coming from right now, and then pretty much walk around and, and help add, like promote the show and everything that makes it look good, you know? And then out of nowhere, he just became Brian Ortega. Ortega, Holmes, you know, I got lowriders. I drink tecate, stupid. And he just started dressing like a Grand Theft Auto San Andreas character. And it was just like super cringe. I know some people in my comments are going to get mad. Like both of his parents are Mexican. I know both of his parents are Mexican. But my point is he didn't talk like that coming up. Now going back to Mackenzie Dern, she did address it. And here's what she had to say. Yeah, I mean, I honestly, I, I laugh, you know, because yeah. it's like, I mean, they've been, I think since when I, maybe I was about like, I don't know, maybe 20 is when it started. Yeah. So I'm 29 now, you know, yeah. and it's still, now I'm laughing about it, but I'm definitely like, man, my mom's American, you know? So I asked my mom, like, mom, am I having an accent? And man, it, it's just crazy how it can just be from like, you're speaking English. I'm, my mind is just constantly Portuguese and English Portuguese, you know what I mean? And I really, today's days, I just mostly speak Portuguese, you know? And I think people don't understand that. So I'm just like, well, I mean, and even in Brazil, when I speak in Portuguese and like in Portuguese in Brazil, it's not a hundred percent Portuguese, you know? Right. So, so you can't win on either side. Everyone's upset, right? So, exactly, exactly, yeah. you know? and, okay, I'm bilingual, you know, I'm just, I hope that Mola doesn't go through the same thing. Now I'm trying hard to give her the benefit of the doubt here, but it's hard because this is an issue where I feel like I might have a little bit of an expertise. From time to time in the comments, somebody will try to guess what kind of an accent I have. I've gotten Canada, Ohio, Chicago, Connecticut, Minnesota. I was actually raised and currently live in Philadelphia, which by itself has a pretty distinct accent, but I'm also technically a first generation immigrant. If you know anything about Philly and specifically the greater Northeast area, there's a pretty big Eastern European community. There's Russians, Ukrainians, Belarusians, and that's what I am. I'm Belarusian. It's a country next to Russia and Ukraine, and it is primarily a Russian speaking country. And I moved here when I was a couple of months away from turn 11 with Russian being my first language. These days, I consider myself fully bilingual. I speak Russian the same exact way I speak English, and I think in a combination of both English and Russian. For the most part, I think I completely lost my Russian accent 
don't speak in English, but from time to time, there is a little bit of weirdness that comes through, especially when I'm tired. But being somewhat intimately familiar with the situation of being in a foreign country and learning a second language when you already speak a primary language, here's what I'll say. It's pretty much an accepted fact among immigrants that if you come here after a certain age, say 18, you will always have somewhat of an accent due to the fact that your voice box already formed a certain way. Like switching from one language to another isn't the same thing as going from like American English to British English to Jamaican English where you can kind of clock the accent and fake it pretty well. It's much more difficult and I would even say impossible to sound natural when speaking a language from a place that you didn't grow up in. Even actors who are trained to do this and are talented in this sort of thing to begin with never quite get it right when they're forced to learn a second language for a movie. And I think anybody that grew up speaking a foreign language can attest to this, be it Korean, Japanese, Spanish, whatever. It just never quite sounds right. And Mackenzie herself touches on this here. And even in Brazil, when I speak in Portuguese and like in Portuguese in Brazil, it's not a hundred percent Portuguese, you know? Right. So you can't win on either side. Everyone's upset, right? So exactly, exactly, yeah. you know? notice how she says that she has an American accent when she's speaking Portuguese. My point is this. If you as an adult speak a language of a country that you grew up in, in a way that is natural to that country, you're not all of a sudden going to develop a heavy accent of a country that you just happen to move to, regardless of how often you speak that language. And you're definitely not going to need a freaking translator for your first language. Like if she gets any more popular, Mackenzie is about to scare people off from traveling altogether. I promise you, if you travel and even live in a Russian speaking place, you're not going to come back sounding like this. My name is Anton. Every morning I usually get up at seven o'clock and brush my teeth. Then I have breakfast and go to school by bus. So here's my theory for what's going on. I think Mackenzie Dern is simply around a lot of Brazilians and she just wants to fit in. So she knowingly or maybe even unknowingly puts on this accent, kind of like what Dylan Dennis used to do when he hung around Connor a lot. I'm not going to shy away from it. I'm here to fight. A lot of jujitsu guys would have crumbled under those shots. They would have looked for a way out and they would have ran. So I came, I, I kept going forward. I faced my adversity and I got him to the ground and finished him. I mean, listen to him here. He damn near sounds like he's from Dublin. That's what Mackenzie Dern is doing. She accentuates parts of sentences and mimics the movements of a person that is from Brazil. Makes sense, right? Imitation is the highest form of flattery. Like Dylan Danis, a grown man imitating his idol, his hero, his dad. Conor McGregor. Bro, you you don't even train, you're a nerd. Why why are you making fun of Dylan all the time? You shouldn't make fun of fighters if you don't fight. Wait, wait. You mad, you mad, you mad. Anyway, I think it's a very interesting adaptive strategy, almost like a defense mechanism where you try to blend into your surroundings to make yourself feel more comfortable and maybe make the people around you feel more comfortable as well. It's pretty interesting, pretty goofy. Anyway, that's about it from me for today. If you want to reach out to me directly with any questions, questions or suggestions, you can get me by email at gk2425 at gmail.com or through Instagram at greg underscore k3. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll leave you with this. I think jiu-jitsu in Arizona is developing very rapidly. I think that we're growing, growing, growing. We're producing a lot of champions, and um, I think we're going to be one of the top states in the United States. That's, a lot of the training in Brazil is more um, like rolling, you know, you do a lot of just rolling in the classes. It's not as much a specific training as the United States. Um, you do like five, like, like ten rounds, you know, in each training session and it's just go, go, go in the levels. But it's a different level, you know. Hey guys, I'm Mackenzie Dern. Um, I'm here in Maine for the Origin Immersion Camp. And um, it's great, you know, we're about to go inside and I'm gonna show you guys some great techniques. Let's go check it out. Sometimes I'll be like all lazy in the training and like my, my grips are weak and I'll be like, oh, I don't really wanna train. And he'll just like trying to make me go, go. And then like, he'll say like, oh, someone's training harder than you right now, somewhere in the world. And then I'll be like, oh man, I have to train harder. And like back then you never fought any girls, but my first tournament I fought a girl and I lost. <laughs> and like I was fighting and my dad told me to do something and I looked at him and then she took me down and then I cried and then I lost. And So I think I was able to see outside. Sometimes you just need a break, you know? 
and I feel like maybe I was sad about the knee surgery, but maybe that's what I needed to bring me here, you know, to have help me put to this level. You know, I was missing something. I, if I win, I know that I found this something, you know. <laughs> And they treat me like a little sister, you know? So, like, they push me and kind of, like, mess me up a little bit, you know? But they, like, really care uh, for me and um, to help me get better. So I'm, like, so comfortable there. And I know that I have, like, the jiu-jitsu community uh, supporting me on this MMA transition. Mackenzie, how's it been? Yeah, it's been good. Like, I've been training hard, but also it's here for, like, vacation. So I had to pass, like, my, uh, Christmas here and New Year's and was eating like a lot of food, great food. So now it's kind of like a little bit hard to come back to the training for the Europeans. I want to see you truly live. I want to see you truly be who you are. Ah!